Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well today. I have another book review for you for the old classic Goosebumps series. This one is number 52, How I Learned to Fly. A lot of folks have recommended this one to me constantly. Uh, I'm nearing almost finishing the entire original series. All 62 books, all reviewed. Um, the ranking are coming up and, and those kinds of things <clears throat> for the channel. Ranking video, excuse me. Uh, How I Learned to Fly is one that I would see constantly when I was in elementary school of this book sitting on library shelves, sitting at local library shelves, not just the ones at school. And uh, the cover alone was what I used to go off of. I didn't care about the titles. If it wasn't Slappy, if it wasn't Haunted Mask, I really didn't care about it back then. And there were some cool looking ones like The Barking Ghost that turns out to be... That's a rough book. <laughs> but there were ones like this that I had no interest in reading. And when I started collecting these books, I looked for kind of the most rare and then the ones that were kind of easy to get your hands on. I think I got this one through Thrift Books for about five bucks. It was a Thrift Books tag right here on the bottom. Uh, this is about 120 pages or so. And I will tell you this, it's not my most favorite <laughs> that I've read. Definitely not as good as The Headless Ghost, which I just read like last week and reviewed. Um, this doesn't come close to that for me, but it is a decent read. It's a solid read, and I can see the appeal why so many people like it. It is more one of the comic book focused books. Uh, does it hold up to some of my favorite GYG comic focused books? Like, uh, for example, uh, the what is it, the one? What there was one that I love. Was it the little the little comic book shop of horrors? I think is what it was. There's like a Universal Monsters thing and an X-Men thing in this comic book shop. Really great stuff. I think that's what it's called, but I've done a review for it. If you've looked through my reviews for the uh, Give Yourself Goosebumps books, I think you'll probably see that review somewhere. Anyway, it's got like a, a lizard and like a superhero costume on the cover. Anyway, this one doesn't come close to things like that when it comes to the comic book focused books, nor does it come close to things like Attack of the Mutant, which I think is much better. I learned, or how I learned to fly is essentially <clears throat> about a young man uh, who gets bullied quite a bit by a kid named Wilson who always seems to one-up him. This whole book is about one-up, one-upsmanship. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's like you have rivals in your life, you know, people <laughs> at work or in, uh, you know, school or anything like that where everything you do, for some reason that person has to show you up. Not anybody else, but just you. If you got a 78 on a test, he got a 79, you know? It, it's one of those types of things. It, it's This book is really focused on that and how irritated our main character kid is with this bully kid named Wilson. Now, Wilson doesn't, like, beat him up. He just calls him names like Jackie instead of Jack, which is our main character's name. Uh, he always wants to have races and uh, do skating and stuff and try to prove how fast he is. Mainly because I think Wilson and Jack both have a crush on this other girl in their life that they're friends with named Mia. And uh, she's just kind of there. <laughs> You know, she they think she's cute, they go to her birthday party and stuff uh, that she has recently. When they go to her birthday party, basically things go kind of sad. You know, once again, Wilson one-ups Jack, our main character. I don't want to really tell you how, but it takes a little bit to get there. Uh, <laughs> like maybe 30 pages to get there, which is a little bit long for a lot of kids, I think. I don't really care about that. I'm not factoring that into my rating at the end of the review, but sometimes I see people getting bored with things like that. And uh, I didn't, but I could see other people getting bored with it. Anyway, our main character, Jack, gets upset at the party. He decides to kind of ruin the birthday party by running out and running away. And Mia really cares about him. She chases after him alongside Wilson and some other kids looking for Jack. And uh, they follow him all the way to this abandoned old house, which is a really great setting. And at one point, he <laughs> is walking around. I think he falls into the basement is what happens. Um, and when he's down there, he finds a book, but he also gets attacked by some rats. And these rats are big, and there's a lot of them. So he manages to get his tail out of there as fast as he possibly can. And when he eventually gets around to home, I think, he, I think is what happened, uh, he picked up that book that he had taken home with him, and it said something about flight lessons, or flying lessons, or something to that degree on the cover. So he opens it up, and it kind of gives this weird recipe on some different things you should do. Some recipe, for example, an actual recipe that you have to make in a bowl to consume while also doing these hopping exercises before you can actually take off as a human. And it's kind of, it very much has that nice 
homely goosebumps feel to it. The way it's written, the kind of silly jokes in there about hopping in place for like 50 times or something. You know, just little silly things like that. This book is very silly in general, but that's what I like about the comic book kind of Goosebumps books. Those really have this feel to them. And that, that kind of that kind of tone, that kind of we don't have to be so serious here mentality works really good for these books. A lot of people really like them, I think, including myself, because of that. It's so different from most middle grade books out there, even at the time when this was coming out. Uh, even now, where comic book heroes and superheroes and stuff are bigger than they've ever been because of the MCU... This is one of those things that still kind of stands out as a book. But apparently our main character does these exercises and stuff. He uh, tries out the recipe that he had to make in a bowl. And at first, he doesn't have anything happen. But then his dog eats some. The dog starts to fly. And the dog is like <laughs> getting like PTSD from this. Uh, it's great. It's a really funny moment. Still holds on. I think it's a great joke in the book. Our main character tries out the same thing the dog tried out. And uh, it works, and he's able to fly now. And then some wrenches get thrown into the machine here, and I don't want to tell you too much about those because, you know, this is spoiler free. But some things get thrown into his machine that cause uh, his excitement, his, you know, he, he, just in general his excitement about this being able to fly thing that Wilson could never top him on. Um, all these things about how he could become a very famous person and whatever because of this, he could become a superhero. All these things, and especially because he loves comic books, it makes him love this idea even more that now he can fly. He has this cool ability he's read about all of his life. And that's really all there is to this book. Does it sound kind of plotless? Yeah, because it kind of is. <laughs> and this book really just kind of meanders around. Um, this is probably the best example of a filler book. It just kind of, it's there, like the Barking Ghost. Uh, this is better than the Barking Ghost by far, but not... Uh, to the degree where I would say it's amazing. A lot of people have recommended this a lot. A lot of you guys have said like, hey, this is a great read. I think you'll really, really dig this one. And I dug it. It was fine, but it, it's it's fine. <laughs> you know, it just, it's one of those ones that I liked. Um, it was decent. I, I don't have any issues with it. I really have no complaints about it aside from it being relatively plotless, relatively meandering. There's really not much to say about it. It's just kind of there, it's a fun experience. I think there's some really great scenes of the flying around stuff. Uh, there's some nice little twists here and there. I think the ending is kind of a mixed bag. Some parts of it I like, some parts I don't. Um, I just, I don't have much to say about this. This book is good. I like it. it it's okay. Um, do I recommend it? Yeah, absolutely. If you love the old classic Goosebumps books and you like that feel of any of the comic book Goosebumps books, I think you'll like this a lot. It really works. I'm surprised this has not been adapted to... A, one of these, you know, graphic novel adaptations they've done for Goosebumps recently in the last 10 years or so. Uh, this probably would be a decent one. I think it's because it's not scary. That's why they kind of avoided that, and I get that, but even like Attack of the Mutant wasn't adapted, and that's a really solid one. That, that's got some creepiness to it, uh, even though it's still on the sillier side like this book. Anyway, when it comes to Goosebumps, How I Learned to Fly, did you guys love this book? Did you hate this book? I think it's fine. I really dug it for the most part. Uh, it's not amazing. It, it's not great. It's not even really all that good. <laughs> it's just fine. It's a good read to, to a degree. Um, it's a filler book. What do you expect? But for what it was, I enjoyed it. Does that make up for what that seemingly negative feel to my review here? I, I hope it does. Anyway, when it comes to how I learned to fly, if I had to rate this book on a five-star basis, I'd give it a three out of five stars. It's kind of on the higher side of a three out of five. It's it's good. It has some decent things in here I haven't seen in other Goosebumps books. I like the jokes. I like the comic book stuff. Um, I like the Superman stuff that's brought up in here a couple of times. Not a whole lot, but just there. Because <clears throat> it's what it feels like more about using your arms and stuff to kind of steer your body when you're flying. That's kind of neat. Uh, reminds me of the Iron Giant a little bit. Anyway, what did you guys think about this book? Did you love it? Did you hate it again? Put all that down in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you have to say about this read. Uh, mine actually came with the trading cards and stuff still inside. Not together, mind you, but it had like, this is that regular bookmark. It's still in the page that it was supposed to be in back in the day. And uh, of course, of all things, I have How I Learned to Fly's little trading card thing. And Chicken Chicken, of all things. Why Chicken Chicken? Of all the books that I have that actually have their cards in them, I have Chicken Chicken. Why does it have to be on this one? I know that's like the next book in the series. Um, I probably won't read that one next, but eventually. 
eventually, as much as I don't want to. Oh, it's going to be a rough one, uh, from what I've heard. Maybe I'll end up liking it. I'll be the one pl person on the planet who likes chicken chicken. That's going to be a weird day. Anyway, how I learned to fly. Put your thoughts and comments down below, folks. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Happy Memorial Day weekend, by the way. I'm wearing my Memorial Day hat. Uh, thank you to the brave out there. Thank you to anybody who uh, served and then happened to die. If your grandparents or anything, you thank them all. Thank them. Uh, this country is great because of that. Anyway, thank you all. God bless you. Goodbye.